Good morning, Kushokton. You are watching Now You're Talking with me, Jesse Marston Cabbage. And welcome back to another edition. We got something fun and exciting for you, but also to help reduce your stress. And I know a lot of people are trying to search different ways how to calm themselves down and get the stress out of their lives and that leads me to my special guest that I have here today. I have here beside me Holly Rainwater and Holly is the outreach coordinator for the Coshocton Public Library and she's going to be demonstrating some different forms of chi, rather like Tai Chi. And Holly, can you explain what is Tai Chi? Well, Tai Chi is a system of exercises that were developed in China about between two and three thousand years ago. And Tai Chi actually falls under the umbrella of something else called Qigong. And Qigong is really what I practice. It's easier than Tai Chi. Tai Chi takes a long time, a lot of years to learn. But you get just the same amount of benefits from Qigong. Why would somebody want to use Qigong? Well, I encountered Qigong because I was having problems with stress. Um, they say about 70% of doctor's visits you can trace back to stress, and okay. that was true for me. Um, so I started looking at ways to reduce my stress, and um, I think a, a cousin of mine had a book about Qigong, and I read the book, and then I read more and more. Everything I know, basically, I've learned from books and DVDs and videos. Um, which is a, a good selling point for the library. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get everything else from the library. I always tell people, you can come to the library and learn anything. Um, I, I, I enjoy movement. I have a background in dance, and I like to exercise. And so Qigong is a way that you can move, and, and you're using your body, but you're also relaxing at the same time. Is there a certain type of certain time during the day where you would use qigong i guess when you see tai chi being performed it's normally in a yard in the morning right yeah. is that like the peak time well they say it, or? they say the best time is in the morning but anytime you do it it's helpful and in fact i kind of do qigong all day long i get up in the morning and i have a little thing a little routine that i do if i'm not working i go outside beside the herb garden and practice my qigong the other morning my husband was leaving it for work and I was out there and he's like bye dear <laughs> he's kind of used to me but um, in the morning is a good time because the chi is fresh chi is life energy and in the morning when the dew and the you know and, and the best place to do it is outside on the grass but you know I've even gone back in the in, in the uh, small meeting room at the library where nobody is when I need a stress break I can go back there and just kind of breathe and Myself, so. so it is something that people can do in their office if they right. have mm -hmm. you know space in their office or yeah. in their building if there's somewhere where they can retreat to right they can definitely mm -hmm. do it there when they're sensing high levels yeah. of anxiety or stress right and like you say in China you'll go out in the parks in the morning and see lots of people doing this and they do it in the schools and even in the hospitals they do Qigong they teach Qigong in the hospitals um, because it is a healing modality so um, yeah and you can also if you regularly exercise if you're a runner or a weightlifter or whatever you can add qigong to your routine it's a little bit like yoga only not as strenuous um, it's really good for flexibility range of motion um, it's good for older people because it helps with balance um, it helps lower your blood pressure Everything that other exercises, it even helps with osteoporosis. Um, so depending on your age and your abilities, you might want to add it on to what you already do, or it can also be like a standalone form of exercise. Okay. Well, if you're watching right now, and if you want to stand up, mm -hmm. push your desk chair in, if you have room in your office, or if you're watching us on a laptop on www.kashoctontv.com, take that laptop outside. It is a nice day today. Or go into another room where you do have some space. And Holly, can you show us some Qigong? Sure. I'll be glad to. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> um, actually, we always begin our classes just by standing still. Okay. okay? And so the, the posture for Qigong is to stand with your feet about hips distance apart. 
And you want to imagine, you use your mind a lot for intention while you're practicing Qigong. Um, and you want to imagine you've got roots on the bottom of your feet, okay? And they're sinking into the floor, all the way through the floor into the earth. And at the same time, you have a string coming out of the top of your head that connects to heaven. And so if you can just imagine the string lifting your head and your roots on your feet sinking into the floor, it helps to create space in your trunk for your internal organs. I can organs. feel that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you just want to make sure that you're, that you're relaxed, you're standing straight, you're erect, but you're relaxed at the same time. Your knees are bent just a little bit. And your posture is erect, but you're, you're not stiff. You're not straight. Your shoulders are relaxed. And you can just kind of check in with your jaw, make sure your jaw. We carry a lot of tension in our jaws, our shoulders, and even the scalp. Um, and if you just imagine your whole body just sort of melting and relaxing. You can close your eyes or you can keep your eyes open with a soft gaze. And then if you just put your hands on your belly, right below your belly button. Okay. Um, this is the power center in Qigong. It's called the lower Dantian. Okay. Technical term. Um, and you want to breathe. When you breathe, you think of having a balloon in your belly. And as you take a breath in, the balloon expands. And then as you exhale, the balloon contracts. And then after you do these two things, focusing on the posture, the breath, your mind is automatically going to start to relax, okay? And you can enhance that by bringing to mind a pleasant scene, the face of someone you love, um, your favorite place to go in the mountains or at the beach, and just sort of imagine you're with that person or you're at that place, and that can kind of add to the experience. And then to start the movement, um, we're just going to lift our arms up in front and then bring the hands in towards the chest and let them float down. And as you bring your arms up, you're breathing in. And then you exhale as the hands float down. And then you can imagine just breathing with your whole body and then the hands float down. And this is called opening the door, and it's often used at the beginning of a Qigong or a Tai Chi um, practice. Okay. Um, another one that we start out with is called rolling the arms. Okay. It's also called uh, monkey swings through the trees. And that's one of the things I like about Qigong. It has these really poetic uh -huh. um, images. So, uh, and all you do is you start with your right arm, okay. and we're gonna let the ar arm float back and up and around and over and then it's like you're smoothing down your other arm and then we reverse it and go the other way so you're reaching up and around and smoothing and as you do this you can feel you can feel it in your hips and your waist so the focus is on the arms but really the whole body gets involved with this, and we're breathing in, and exhaling, and breathing in, and exhaling, and then we're just going to let the hands, this is called sinking the chi, just let the hands float down. Okay. And um, let's see, one with a little bit more movement. If you stand, this is called horse stance with the, hand, the, the feet a little bit further than hips width apart. And we're gonna tuck this arm behind our back like this. And the other arm comes up flat, parallel to the ground, about chest level. And we're just gonna bend the right knee and sort of lean over and scoop down toward the floor. And then we just repeat this. This is called sweeping the water. And so we inhale and we exhale. 
And then we'll do one more. And exhale. And then we're going to reverse and bring this arm back and this arm to the front. And we're going to just do, we'll just do a couple on this side. Do one more and sweeping and then coming back to the center and then sinking the chi. And I like that about qigong. Each movement you end before you go on to the next one. Okay. Uh, do we have time for another? Sure. One? Let's do okay. it. This one is called pushing the mountain and this is really good for releasing stress and it involves uh, a breathing technique. Okay. So we're back in our horse stance, and the reason they call this horse stance is because your knees are bent, your feet are wide, it's sort of like you're sitting on a horse, okay? okay. And we're going to bring our hands up to chest level, and we're going to take a, a, a deep breath in, and then we're going to sort of sink down and push out. And as we do that, we're going to make the sound... Okay. okay, and then once our arms go out like this, then we're going to stand back up and pull our fists back in. Okay, so and to um, you can imagine any kind of stress you're dealing with, any kind of a situation right now, you're just sort of pushing that thing away <laughs> and filling it up with good clean breath. Okay, so let's start with an inhale and then. And then we inhale. And inhale. And one more. And then we step back together and we sink the chi. Okay? Nice. Let's okay. do it. Yes. Okay, this one is called uh, Drawing the Bow. I feel all great. I'm okay. walking around five miles. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Drawing the Bow. This is one of my favorites. And you're back in horse stance. You can turn your feet out a little bit if you're more comfortable that way. We're going to be sinking down. And the, the key about it, you're just, you're just dropping, okay? You don't want your rear end to stick out like this. This is okay. a common problem. You're just sinking straight down. And our arms are going to come sort of swoop up to the side and we get into this position. And it's important that you've got your index finger pointing towards the ceiling. Okay. And then we're just going to draw the bow back like this. And then we release it and the arms float down and we draw the bow back like this. And release. And draw the bow. And release. And draw the bow. And release. Okay, and then we'll just step back and sink the qi. Now another thing about qigong is that the Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine looks at the body differently than we do and so they would say that exercise is good for your lungs and your large intestine. The arrow one? The arrow okay. one. Because the lung meridian runs from here and down and off your thumb. The large intestine meridian runs up the arm and around the nose. And pointing this finger straight up like that helps to activate that um, the large intestine. That first, this one that we did, the water sweeping, mm -hmm. that's good for the kidneys, both because of the water imagery, but also your kidneys are here. And so that's one of the things about being mindful when you do Qigong is that you're you're aware of what you're doing and I'm tucking my arm back here I'm holding my kidneys I'm bringing energy to that area um, and then I'm not hurrying I'm taking my time I'm not I, the point is not to do 10 donkey kicks and then you know 15 push-ups I'm just in this moment I'm doing this movement and every every phase of that is important so it it helps what I tell my classes is we usually feel like 
we're either dragging behind ourselves or we're way ahead of ourselves. You know, I've got to get this done and that done or I'm so behind. And when we, when we step into that space of Qigong, it's like now my mind, my body, my spirit, my heart, we're all together in the same place <laughs> at the same time. Right. So that's, that's really where the stress release, the, the body movement helps, the breathing helps, um, and it, and it's, but it's also that mental focus, which is a little bit different. Um, than what we're used to. If somebody wanted to know more about Qigong, is there a class coming up at the Kashata Public Library? We are finishing up a class. Um, I do about five sessions a year, and each session is about six weeks long. Um, we're finishing our spring session. We have a class tomorrow. We meet on Thursday mornings at 9 o'clock. So we'll have a class tomorrow, and people can come to that. You don't have to start at the beginning. It's something like you did mm -hmm. today. You can just Hop right kind of in. Hop right in and do it, yeah. Um, so we'll have one more class next week. Um, and then uh, Saturday morning, April 28th, we're going to have a special class, 9 o'clock. It's a little bit early, but that's the best time. It's the best cheese. <laughs> it's the best cheese. So uh, <laughs> 9 o'clock, April 28th, at Clary Gardens Amphitheater. We will be having a special class. It's to celebrate World Tai Chi and Qigong Day. Okay. People all over the world will be practicing that day. It's just to help bring awareness to the health benefits. Um, and so we'll be doing that. And then I'll have another class starting up in June, June 7th, Thursdays, okay. uh, 9 o'clock at the Park Hotel lot. Okay, wonderful. And I have lots of books. I have, we pro our library probably has the best collection of Qigong and Tai Chi books and DVDs. So if you want to learn more about it yourself, if you can't come to the class, you can pop in a DVD and learn that way. Okay. So Definitely great resources for you to have yeah. for Qigong yeah. working at the Coshocton Public yeah. Library. Well, definitely, thank you so much, Holly Rainwater. She is the outreach coordinator for the Coshocton Public Library. I love that. I feel de-stressed. I feel great. How about you? Now, you can watch this anytime. So definitely get your laptop out. Go out to the front yard tomorrow morning and do some Qigong. Now, if you have any suggestions on talk show guests you would like to see here on KashoctonTV.com, email me, jessie, J-E-S-S-I, at KashoctonTV.com. And also, don't forget, if you have a YouTube channel, Definitely let me know your channel name is, and I'd love to pull off some videos off your channel to put on KashoctonTV.com. So definitely help me help you make KashoctonTV.com your Kashoctons online TV station. Thanks for the morning. I'm Jesse Marston-Cavage with KashoctonTV.com.